Hey guys, Daniel Master 87 here, and today I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video. I want to start doing discussion videos on Dead by Daylight. Like anytime some new nerf or buff is announced or other changes associated with uh, improving or changing the game. But I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. This is the 5.5.0 PTB notes that they put out. And it says, fixed vulnerabilities that could be abused by cheaters. Basically saying that there's a hacker epidemic in Dead by Daylight right now. Uh, some people are saying that it's due to it becoming free on the Epic Game Store for that short period of time a while back. Uh... I'll say that that's probably part of the problem, but it's not the whole problem, because if people are going to want to hack, uh, then they will, even though uh, the game being free, especially when they already own a copy, they can just create a free throwaway account on there and do their hacking on there, and it doesn't matter if they get banned, because they still got their main account. But yeah, hackers, very bad uh, for the game. I thankfully have only dealt with a few. I've dealt with very few over the course of playing this game, but it is annoying nonetheless because they will just appear in your match and then instead of wanting to play a normal match then you just want to quit because they're doing something that stops you from doing that. They'll also be reducing the frequency of visual and audio feedback of rolled back hits. That's talking about dead hard. And I don't know why my opinion on this is so rare, but I'm of the mind that we want to keep the blood splatter and the survivor screaming as if they're going down in the game so that we know when we got robbed of a hit. Some people are like, well, if they take the blood and the scream away, then I'll be happy because it'll be just like I missed a hit. And it's like, no, you're, you're making it too easy on these devs this rollback it's it's not creating an even playing field uh, with the server or whatever it's clearly favoring the survivors because mm -hmm. what it's basically saying is every time you get a rolled back hit it's because you the killer have a bad connection and the survivor has a great connection therefore your hit gets taken away it simply cannot be that case every single time like every match that there's people with dead hearts in it, I get a rolled back hit. Uh, and at pallets too, I get a rolled back hit. It's not possible that it's my bad connection every single time. So I don't know why people are acting as if it's okay if we lose the information of, of us getting those rolled back hits. Because then we won't even know when we're getting robbed. Because then we'll be there saying, I knew I should have got that hit, but you don't know for sure now because you wanted to take that information away from us. Now we've got some cool changes for survivors as well. Basically there's going to be this new thing that you can toggle in your settings uh, for survivor only. Where it's like, you can press a button to start an action instead of hold it or vice versa which is basically what it is now uh, that would make it to where instead of holding R1 on a gin for 60 seconds or whatever it can be kind of a strain on your fingers if you're just doing that game after game you can just press the button and your character will stay on there until you press the button again or press the sprint button to get off of it and I think that's a nice QOL change for survivors. They're also going to be adding a new betas tab, which betas are going to be like a replacement PTB. Uh, people on console, like my friend Hybrid, were complaining that the people on PC were able to participate in the player test build and test out all these new features and give feedback on it before it was released. Uh, so now these betas are going to be across all versions of the game, so even console players will be able to participate and give their feedback on some new fe 
feature that's being proposed. And they're even going to give you extra blood points for doing test matches with those uh, perks, which is nice. Or perks or whatever new thing there is that they're uh, wanting us to test. There's also going to be the new wiggle mechanic. Um, and I kind of disagree with its implementation, and I'll tell you why in a bit. But basically the new wiggle is going to be, instead of you spinning the stick, then you're going to be hitting skill checks. And I'm not sure if it's going to be a continuous uh, of that line that you, you know, how the skill checks work. That thin line comes around, it spins around the skill check zone, and then when it comes into the good zone or the great zone, you hit it and that line connecting with that skill check zone is how you get a skill check. Uh, I'm wondering if that line is gonna go around constantly like clockwise or counterclockwise or because I think there's two skill checks if it's going to bounce back to the right when you hit the one on the left and then back to the left when you hit the skill check on the right. Uh, I'm wondering if that's how it's gonna work but we're just gonna have to wait and see. I disagree with uh, them changing the wiggle to this. I think all they needed to do was to make it to where whenever I'm spinning my stick or for PC players, whenever they're hitting A and D over and over again, uh, it would stop dropping our inputs because it actually doesn't matter how fast you're spinning your control stick or pressing A and D, uh, like doing it faster and freaking breaking your controller like some people do it's not necessary as long as you're doing a constant motion of spinning the stick then the meter should keep going up but for some reason sometimes that's what I'm doing and it'll drop my input for like half a second and it's like wow I maybe could have got off that Kipler's shoulder if that hadn't stopped right there because I was doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing uh, but we'll have to see with that uh new skill check uh, mechanic. It seems kind of interesting. Now let's get into the fun part of the changes, the killer and survivor add-on and perk changes and stuff. For Blight, he is getting uh, just a small buff to his adrenaline vial. And the adrenaline vial is a green add-on that you would basically never use. I always avoid it when I'm going through the blood web because it does all this stuff for you. It decreases rush token charge time, uh, increases rush speed, increases max rush tokens, increases the look angle, but none of that really matters because it decreases your turn rate while rushing by 80%. So you basically cannot turn while you're using this add-on. It, it changes Blight's power fundamentally in that instead of having more control over your rushes, you're basically just bouncing, looking to where you're gonna rush next, bouncing there, uh, looking to where the survivor is or your next bounce location. You're just going in straight lines back and forth basically instead of having more control over your power. And I just think that this is a self-destructive add-on. Why would you ever use this? There's probably a few pros that are out there that are like, Oh, this add-on's great. And it's like, no, not really. But they're basically, uh... They're buffing it because they're... Lessening the decrease on the turn rate uh, penalty. So that you'll be able to turn slightly or whatever while you're using this add-on instead of... It just being straight, but I don't think that's going to be enough for this uh, add-on. Maybe it will actually let you use this add-on better. Like, if you have this add-on and then you have the green uh, turn add-on. I think that's a thing. Yeah. Then maybe you can uh, use this add-on to some effect, but I don't really think that's going to happen. I think they're wasting uh, time and energy on buffing something that no one's ever going to use. Now Leatherface got a ton of changes to his add-ons. 
Some of them are... Well, basically all of them are buffs. Uh, the carburetor turn tuning guide. And the depth gauge rake. Uh, these are pink and purple add-ons, once again, that have really good upsides, but they also have crazy downsides, which defeats the entire purpose of them being good. Uh, basically, they're buffing these to where, instead of being decreased uh, chainsaw sweep movement speed by 4%, it's only going to be by 2%. But these add-ons, especially the Depth Gauge Rake, don't even need these downsides. Because uh, with this add-on, you're already getting an increased charge time for the chainsaw by 22%. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't see why they even need these uh, downsides. If I was giving buffs to these, I would just remove those downsides because they're not needed. Then you've got the Iridescent Flesh, which... <clears throat> This is the one that recharges your, uh, it replenishes the charges of your chainsaw as you hit a survivor with it. So you could do crazy things with it, like down one survivor, go on to the next, down them, and then that's like two or three survivors down with a single, uh, sweep of your chainsaw. But, uh, the buff has nothing to do with that part, it has to do with the second part of it. Because this add-on actually limits the maximum tantrum duration to 8 seconds. They're buffing it to where the max tantrum duration is only 5 seconds. Which actually seems pretty useful, but again, uh, you would actually have to go into tantrum. Uh, and Leatherfaces, who are good at the game, probably won't be doing that. It'll only help out like noobs who are bumping into everything, like myself. And the long guide bar, uh, it's a similar thing. It increases the time the chainsaw can be revved before triggering a tantrum by one second. Now it's going to be two more seconds of revving you can have before going into tantrum. And um, this just doesn't... Uh, it's like, wow, plus one second, that is going to be so useful, really. But then there's also the thing with these survivor masks being removed. If you killed like 50 or 100 uh, Claudettes, you would get this mask. If you did the same for Dwight and Meg and Jake, you would also get their faces. But they are removing all of these faces, which by the way are the, the few free-to-play um, cosmetics for this killer that are available to us because the killer itself and all his cosmetics are real money real money real money only uh, that you can't buy with shards or anything you have to buy them with oryx cells or some other kind of thing and this is just stupid this whole controversy because they're the devs are claiming that people who wear the smart face are using it as like a black face or other racist kind of thing where it's like oh they're they're wearing it and they're targeting people of color and stuff like that and it's like that is a complete there's no basis for that at all like I don't think anyone was complaining about that except for like one or two people and the whole thing is just stupid because you're not going to solve any alleged racism or whatever by removing this mask, especially when it's also a downside for everyone else who wasn't doing that. Who It's like, oh, I get all these cosmetics for my leather face. Oh, now they get taken away because some dumb controversy that's almost completely made up and is just fake virtue signaling. Uh, but that's all for that. The clown. I'm not going to like going over these changes because some of them are kind of stupid, although some of them are buffs. The robin feather. Uh, they're buffing to decrease the bottle cooldown uh, by 40% instead of 30%, so you can 
throw one after the other that much faster. That's the Robin Feather buff. The Solvent Jug. Uh, they're buffing to increase the duration of invigoration by two seconds instead of one second. There's also the Flask of Bleach, which is a nerf because they're making the hindered penalty from intoxication 4% extra instead of 5%, which this is a decent add-on for Clown right now if you're not using the, the pinky finger and all that, uh, because it actually slows down survivors more, and I don't know why they're nerfing this, like no one was complaining about Flask of Bleach. Uh, you're just going to see even less variety of add-ons from people playing Clown. And especially with this with this next nerf I'm about to talk about, you might not see Clown anymore at all, especially at high level. And you know what add-on I'm talking about? I'm talking about Redhead's Pinky Finger, which survivors have been complaining about for the longest time, saying that it's overpowered or whatever because... You hit a survivor directly with the bottle and then you're expo uh, they're exposed for as long as they're hindered. And it's like, dude, people are comparing this honestly to the same power level of like Iridescent Head. And it's like, are you kidding? It's just Iridescent Head but extra steps. Because the way they talk about it, it's, it's as if you get instantly down by him hitting you with a bottle or something. You don't. There is still so much control the survivor has even when that happens. Because you're only exposed for as long as you're hindered. So if that, that intoxication, that hindered effect goes away, uh, then you're not exposed anymore. And it only lasts like four seconds on your end or whatever. And survivors still have a chance to get to windows, they still have a chance to get to pallets. Uh, you can be really hard with your movement as survivor to let the killer not hit you directly with one of those bottles. And people are, are so stupid about it, like they don't see anything I'm talking about. Because they're like, well, clowns bottles slow you down so it makes you easier to get hit with the bottle and hitting survivors uh, directly with the bottle takes no skill it's super easy to aim with and it's like wrong 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 because I mean try it for yourself play clown and use redhead's pinky finger and try to get a direct freaking hit with a bottle on them uh, and you will see how difficult it is especially when you realize that they're they're being slowed down by your other bottles uh, good survivors they'll just have tricky enough movement and you won't be able to hit them like half the time uh, and people they're just blowing it so out of proportion that way so because another thing they're saying is you're spamming your killer power to down the survivors that way and it's like this idea that the killer is spamming their their killer power that's a fancy way of saying that they're using their killer power to down you like how can you use the killer power too much it makes no sense that's the whole reason you're playing the killer is to use their power I just think the whole argument uh, for this nerf is stupid but it's happening nonetheless so the nerf itself redhead's pinky finger will be reducing your bottle count by two so new redhead's pinky finger if you put it on then you're going to only have two bottles with clown to use and I think that is just so bad I don't think it deserves this freaking nerf at all and it's not even like it's addressing the whole point survivors were getting mad about with this hat on it still exposes you whenever you get hit directly with a bottle you just can't throw as many bottles because a pink add-on of this power level should have limits, they'll say. Uh, 
but it's, it's not getting rid of the exposed part, which was the thing they were complaining about. You just have two less bottles, so it's like no one is happy, especially the killers, because this add-on was unjustly nerfed. Now you're going to have to use the cheap gin bottle uh, with the new Redhead's Pinky Finger just to get your two bottles back. Uh, so basically you, you'll need a pink and a purple add-on to get the combined effect of what was originally just the pink add-on. Do you see how crippling the freaking nerf is to this add-on? And it's the only add-on that could like allow Clown to push to a somewhat high level. He still wouldn't beat the top teams uh, with unnerfed pinky finger because they would just do gins too quick and he would get like one one kill max if even that and so survivors once again this is a change that's catering to casuals because they even acknowledge themselves that the the top survive with friends teams and stuff they won't even be affected by this but it's uncoordinated solo teams that will get screwed by this and it's like okay so we should be balancing around the top caliber not whatever your idea of balance is. Well that's enough out of uh, that one add-on. Pig's also getting some add-on changes. They're actually both buffs but they're not doing enough in my opinion. Amanda's letter is the one where while you're crouched you see survivors ores within 60 meters and as a downside, it decreases your head traps by three, so you only have one head trap with this add-on, just so that you can see survivors' ores within 16 meters while crouched. I don't know how they can even give that downside for how insignificant this effect is. I mean, compare it to All Seeing Blood, especially the unnerfed version, uh, which it should still be at, because that was an unjust nerf. Uh, I mean, when you're crouched, you're slow, and and the survivors can still somewhat see you. When you're cloaked as Wraith, you're invisible and you're moving super fast. I don't see how they can make this a pink add-on and give it this much freaking of a downside when Wraith has all-seeing blood, which is still decent even while nerfed. Uh... I actually complained on the forums that I would not use this add-on until it was buffed, and so I guess my prayers were answered. They are buffing it to where it only decreases your head traps by two instead of three, so you'll have two head traps with this add-on. But it's still like, why? Why does it need that downside? Even just the see ores within 16 meters while crouched that's not even pink add-on worthy that's purple at best like that's such an insignificant effect in the grand scheme of things it's just a little bit more convenient for killer when they get to see auras and then the last will instead of buffing pig's base kit uh charge attack they're just making us have to improvise and use two add-ons just to make pig's charge attack uh, different. So it says right here, increase ambush attack movement speed by 6%. That's the good part. That's what you run it for. But this second effect is freaking stupid because it increases your charge time by 66%. And all they're doing with this buff is changing it to where you it's only a 33% increased charge time. Why does it need increased charge time at all? Why can't it just be an add-on that improves her power? Uh, particularly the half of her power that barely even gets used because it's, it, it, it is so badly designed. It, it's a worse uh, wraith coming out of his cloak and hitting you around the loop. It, it's not even as good as that. So they really should have buffed uh, Pig's base kit instead of playing around with these uh, ambush attack add-ons. Then the twins, even though they're one of the worst killers in the game, they're getting nerfed, a bunch of their add-ons. 
and then some of theirs are getting buffed, but it's all of their best add-ons are getting nerfed, whereas the ones that are getting buffed, like, aren't going to do much anyway. Like, no one freaking uses them. Toy Sword is getting the decreased pounce charge time uh, nerfed from 0.25 seconds to just 0.2 seconds. I know these these nerfs to these twins add-ons are going to be slight, but the fact that they're getting nerfed at all is just a slap in the face to people who still want to try and play this killer and make them work. Because these are the kinds of add-ons that you should be focusing on and improving or making base kit or whatever. Why are you, why are you forcing us to use all these other add-ons? Because... One of the ones they're buffing is is the iridescent pendant. Crush Victor while he's dormant and you're exposed for 30 seconds. They're changing it to 45 seconds. Like, <laughs> these are so situational because assume a survivor does kick Victor while he's dormant. They may be on the opposite side of the map from the twins the whole time and like never be seen again. And then another one of twins actually useful add-ons getting nerfed they are instead of increasing victor's movement speed by 0 0.4 meters a second with madeline's scarf it's only going to be 0 0.3 meters a second so actually making victor feel faster and more fluid and not as janky they're just nerfing everything that freaking uh contributes to that and then I think there was one more add-on, no, two more add-ons of theirs. Uh, baby Teeth, another inconsequential add-on. When you crush Victor after he's attached to you, uh, then you get blindness for 15 seconds. They're changing it to 30 seconds. Again, not very useful at all. Then, wasn't there another one? Oh yeah, the green one, Stale Biscuit decreases the pounce cooldown by 0 0.5 seconds they're nerfing it so that it's only 0 0.4 seconds so in the few scenarios where you actually do pounce and miss a survivor um, you actually don't get as fast of a freaking uh, recharge on your pounce thing uh, bef it's so stupid because like 90% of the time you're going to miss a survivor and they're going to be close enough to kick you. So in those few instances, while you're running this add-on, you're going to have even less benefit for <laughs> having a, a pounce cooldown. I mean, this is so stupid. This is one of the worst killers in the game from a design standpoint, and they don't perform that well either. Why are you giving them a freaking nerf? It's nonsensical. And then the Oni did get one add-on change. This pink add-on, Iridescent Family uh, Crest. Whenever you miss a, a attack during your Blood Fury, then it, it creates a shock wave, which right now is 12 meters, and all the survivors in that radius will scream and reveal their location they're buffing it to where it's 24 meters instead of 12 but it's like where would this add-on be useful even in the best scenario i can think of where you're just looking for a survivor who's hiding and not really doing gins or whatever because they're one of the last two or the last one or whatever why would you be running around slamming the ground trying to reveal their location like that instead of just looking around quickly while being in your power it, it's stupid yeah i know i keep using that word a lot but it really is oh yeah nemesis also getting nerfed his best add-ons Mikhail's eye uh and marvin's blood are getting nerfed Increased zombie movement speed by 50%. It's only going to be 35% now. 
and then Marvin's Blood, you're only going to get 25% more mutation rate instead of 33%. Because you know Nemesis getting, I don't know, decent add-ons is too OP or something. But going back to Mikhail's Eye, it's like they're also buffing something that increases their speed. So it's like counterintuitive to what they're even trying to do. Shattered Star's badge is being buffed uh, so that the zombies move 150% for 60 seconds after a generator is completed. Again, if they get stuck in a corner, they can't do anything about it. Uh, and right now, this effect actually does last for 60 seconds. They're going to be changing the the wording on it so that it actually reads 60 instead of 30 seconds. And then I think there was another... There's the other iridescent, the iridescent uh, umbrella badge. After you take a vaccine, then you'll be exposed for 30 seconds. They're buffing it to 60 seconds. Uh, so maybe that will be useful, maybe it won't be. That's a, a actual welcome buff, in my opinion. And then Pinhead. Lo and behold, they're actually bringing his voice lines back to the game. Because in the original player test build of him, he had voice lines. Then they took them away because they never specified the reason. They just... We all just assume they didn't have the rights to do it or whatever. But they're bringing the voice lines back. And in fact, they're actually... They're actually giving him extra voice lines. Like when he downs you when you are trying to solve the box. And he says something. Whenever he downs you near an exit, he says something. Uh, new lines that he's got whenever he's teleporting to you. Uh, and in his more ease, he says stuff as he did before, and you can actually see his mouth moving. So that's pretty cool and pretty funny. Now there were actually a bunch of survivor perks uh, as well that were getting buffed. For example, boil over the cake perk. Uh, basically, you're going to struggle even harder while you're on the killer's back, so that's going to be annoying to deal with this killer. Uh, hook, hook auras will be hidden from even further away, so you need to just use your eyes to freaking find the hooks. And then a third buff that they're giving to that perk is survivors automatically gain 25% wiggle progress whenever a killer drops from a height and they're not very specific with that they're not saying how high of a drop it needs to be but that's going to be abusable especially by survive with friends uh they'll just go down on like the roof of Haddonfield or the game or some other map like that that basically requires you to drop down sometimes to get a convenient hook now distortion Instead of giving it away to actually recover some of its tokens, they're just giving it a fourth token instead of just three. Which again, I don't know why you'd ever run that perk over uh, Object of Obsession. Because you don't get your aura hidden with Object, but you figure out if the killer has any information perks. And then buckle up after buckle up after you pick up a survivor it's a secondary effect of the perk uh, then you and the survivor who you picked up see the killer's aura for six seconds it's being buffed to 10 seconds and that's basically all with that it's probably still not going to see any play because it's a garbage perk power struggle is getting a buff you only need to be at 15% wiggle progress in order to activate it and drop the pallet on the killer instead of 25%. This is definitely going to be abusable 
by Survival Friends, I almost want to say pushing it to meta status. Because uh, all you gotta do is uh, flip flop power struggle. You go down under a pallet, someone is nearby to where they're, they're forced to slug you because if they pick you up under the pallet, they're gonna get pallet slammed and drop you. Uh, or if survivors have flashlights and they want to stop you from picking them up under the pallet, they can do that. And so with this new perk, it's basically like, oh, you slug someone under the pallet for five seconds or whatever. They get to pallet slam you now without their teammates even needing to come rescue them. Then wake up is getting a buffed, which is which is actually a welcome buff. Instead of opening exits 15% faster, you open them 25% faster. And some people say there's already videos out there where it's like put on wake up and spine chill and resilience and leader and you'll be able to open an exit in like 10 seconds or whatever. But it's only 20 seconds to open an exit gate so I I don't think it's going to be like game changing, like everyone's going to start using this perk or anything. Because it only comes in at the end of the game and you have to be the one opening the exit. If other people are doing it because you're on a hook or whatever reason, then you don't get anything out of it. Oh, and then back to killer perks because the devs are disorganized whenever they're making these. Uh, patch notes. They are reworking Gearhead. I see it somewhat as a nerf rather than a buff. Because right now you gotta hit survivors two times with your basic attack and then Gearhead activates for 30 seconds while it's active each time a survivor hits a good skill check while repairing the generator is yellow. The new one you only need to hit a survivor one time with any basic or with any attack because it just says when a survivor loses a health state and I don't know if it's uh, if it's duration is also it's cooldown or whatever like it is now uh, they're not quite specific on that but they're changing it from instead of the gin turning yellow when they hit a good skill check, it's the survivor's aura being revealed when they hit a great skill check, which not only is them hitting a great skill check freaking stupid, why didn't you just change it to them hitting any skill check? That way it would be like way more applicable. Uh, they also just changed it from the gin being yellow to you seeing their aura, which it's, it, it's exactly like a uh, barbecue. The survivors can just hide their aura behind the djinn, and the killer won't see that they're there. I don't know how I'm so in the minority here in, in saying that that's a nerf to this perk. When the djinn's yellow, you can clearly see it's being worked on, but when all you get is a survivor aura, even though their aura is shown for a whole 10 seconds or whatever, they can still hide it behind the djinn, just like with barbecue. But people were saying that I was being like overly specific with my example pointing that out. I just don't get it. We'll have to see how good the, the perk is when it comes out. But I don't have high hopes for it, especially since info perks are dead in my opinion. <laughs> then you have Remember Me. Uh, instead of making the sensible buff, then they just say hey you don't need to do a basic attack it's just when the obsession loses a health state you get a stack what they should have done was make it to where the obsession is also slowed down by the effects of memory because right now if you have four stacks of memory and the obsessions opening the exit gate it doesn't even matter because they don't have to deal with that additional uh, 48 I don't know, 64 seconds or whatever the max is of you opening the exit. It's just freaking stupid that they're not making the most obvious buff you can possibly think of. 
Then coup de gras. They also buffed it. Or is it? Coup de gras. Uh, the distance of your next lunge is 80. Uh, yeah, I'm changing it to 80% instead of 60%. Even on the original PTV version, when it was a 100% increased lunge, people were saying it's going to be a niche perk. Like, it's so freaking niche. No one uses it at all. Why can't they just buff it back to the 100% extra lunge or rework it completely to be something better? Because the buff that we're getting now isn't even going to make it as good as it was originally. And even then people were saying it's going to be a bad perk. Then you've got... Part of Chase, which they're buffing. No one's gonna use the perk anyway because it's only decreasing your terror radius while you're in freaking Chase, which makes no sense because hit and run is dead. Uh, but they're changing it to where if your obsession is killed, then you won't uh, lose all your tokens. I don't know what took them so long to make this changed this perk they should be doing the same for all the other obsession perks like why can i not get any more say the best for last stacks uh by hitting non-obsessions just because my obsession is dead it makes no sense they're also buffing dead man switch which it might actually become meta it might not i'm um, kind of on the pessimistic side of that and thinking that it won't become meta. There's going to be a lot of people using it when it first gets changed, that for sure. Because right now it's an obsession perk for some reason. After you hook the obsession, the next time a survivor within that 40, that next 45 seconds lets go of a gin, it's blocked for the rest of that duration. So if, if a survivor... Because as soon as the obsession gets hooked, the perk activates. So if the survivor lets go of the gin at like 20 seconds, that's only 25 seconds of blockage. It's not a whole 45 seconds. So the perk's already weak. And all they're doing by buffing it is making it to where you hook any survivor and this perk activates. It doesn't have to be the obsession. And maybe this perk will work out, maybe it won't because gen blockage like corrupt intervention and uh deadlock is so much better than regression at this point because it's consistent and it's guaranteed instead of the regression on pop and ruin on all that which is nowhere near guaranteed uh despite people telling me i'm wrong and then in the known issue section i noticed two things uh, where they say if you're working on a gen as a survivor uh, and you get an overcharged skill check or jolt happens then you'll be pushed off the gen and it will start regressing uh... i'm oh yeah overcharge uh... skill check also does not grant progression but they're they're listing it as a known issue and i feel like that is how those perks should work anyway so by them saying it's a known issue that makes it sound like it's not intended uh when it totally should be intended because that's an actual like good buff to those perks so those those changes will probably never see the light of day in the live game even though they should this next change definitely should not though and i i can picture it making it to live Lightborn, whenever survivors are trying to blind a killer who has it, they'll get a notification that the killer has the perk. And that's freaking stupid in my opinion. And so is this whole... This debate that Lightborn is like an overpowered perk <laughs> for killers and the killers are arguing that it's a fine perk or whatever. Why are we even still arguing about this perk? <laughs> like... Do you ever see the perk being ran at top level or anything? It's just a, a silly argument being made by both sides. But that's basically 
everything they have for this update. I'm really kind of disappointed. I wish that they would buff more killer stuff in the right areas that they wouldn't buff survivor stuff in the wrong areas because there's two things that they're doing that I don't agree with they're nerfing the strongest add-ons that these killers have and then saying oh but we buffed this brown or we buffed this other add-on that has an inconsequential effect so it's not all killer nerfs it's actually some buffs and it's like no we we know what you're doing you're just trying to make it seem not so one-sided which it clearly is no one's falling for it yeah and another thing they're doing is basically we always want the meta to be shaken right we want the meta to change how the devs handle it for survivors is they buff the lesser used perks uh, to hopefully bait survivors into using those perks instead of the meta perks which never works because they'll just keep using the strongest stuff available to them like you honestly think that they're going to start using boil over and buckle up and crap when they've got BS, Unbreakable, BT, Dead Hard for killers they try to shake up the meta by nerfing all of the killers most powerful stuff so that killers will stop using it in the hopes that they use all these lesser used perks and that's just the complete wrong way to go about it it's it's double standards between what they're doing to shake up the meta for the survivors and the killers but that's basically all i've got right now this is daniel master 87 signing out